morning, Southside Church. This morning is a very, very chilly morning in Cape Town, but we're about to heat it up in this place. And uh, if you've been part of our online family for a while now, it's so good to have you back with us. Mm. But if this is your first time with us, we want to give you a very warm welcome this morning. And we trust that you are going to be blessed with us. And if this is your first time with us this morning, we would love to keep in contact with you. And how we do that is by you checking out our website, which is www.southsidechurch.co.za. On our website, you will find a connection card where you will fill out your details so that someone from our leadership team at Southside Church will keep in touch with you. But before we move on to... Who's standing next to me? I am Trezor Overmayer, and I have the amazing privilege of serving with our leadership here at Southside Church. But for now, next to me we have Angela Kim, and Angela and her amazing team serves as part of our kids' church here at Southside Church. Over to you, Angela. Thank you, Trezor. Morning, guys. My name is Angela, and like Trezor said, I serve with an amazing team at Southside Kids. Um, So this week, we are in our second week of our curriculum called Love, and today we are going to be learning about God's love and how we need to love God with everything we have. So in in the Bible, it says to love God with our hearts, minds, and souls. So this week in in our curriculum, that's what we're going to be learning about. Our story is about Daniel and how he was thrown into the lion's den because he prayed to God. And we're going to be learning about how much he loved God, how much perseverance he had, and that he did everything he could because he loved God so much. And we're going to try something new this week. So you guys know we have a Facebook page, right? We want you to leave us a comment so that next week we can give you a shout out. So if you've put your name there or if your mom and dad puts your name there and you want me to leave you a little message next week when we live, I can do that. So if it's your birthday, if it's your mom or dad's birthday, or if you just want us to say hello to you, leave us a message and we can do that for you next week. to extend our love to God is through song. And so now we are going to enter into a time of worship. This morning, I just want you to quickly close your eyes and we will pray. Father God, this morning we want to thank you that in spite of the season we are in, for all the things that we can be grateful for, One of the ways that we can extend our gratitude this morning, Lord, is just to lift our voices and to sing and to join the many who have sung about your love. We thank you, Lord, for this place and this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship the Lord this morning with grateful hearts. Come on. We love you, Jesus. Oh, oh. this is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. For all my hope is in your name. Now your joy awaits oh, my praise. Come on, I give thanks for all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing, Lord. I am grateful. I'm so grateful this morning. Yeah. When I was down, you brought me out. You set my feet on higher ground. Hey. So here I stand. You are my God. 
Your faithfulness, my solid ground. Hey, come on. I give thanks for all you have done. And I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. I give thanks for all you have done. I won't forget all the battles you have won. Lord, I am grateful. I'm so grateful. Oh, oh, yeah. And as we lift our hands, the heavens open, heavens open. So let our lives declare the love our God has spoken. so grateful this morning that we can be in this place. We are so grateful, Lord, for technology that we are able, Father God, to have this online service and just be a blessing to the nations out there. And we are so grateful, Lord, that this morning you will speak to each and every heart that will listen this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning I have the opportunity to share with you around uh, giving. And this morning, I want to share with you around Matthew chapter 6, from verse 25 to 27, and verses 33. It reads as follows. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, know about your body, what you will put on. Is not life worth more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. It's your heavenly Father that feeds them. Are you not worth more value than they? Verse 33. But seek First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. During this past lockdown, it, it was a very difficult time for many families and many businesses all around the globe. This has certainly caused a lot of panic, and so many, from the least to the greatest, it has led to many companies closing down and many losing their jobs. But one way God never wired us as his people, as his creation, is to panic or worry. 
He created us for worship. And one way that we can worship Him is through our giving. And this is why when we give to God, we are giving to the work of His kingdom. We get to have a share in how the kingdom grows, how people's lives are being changed. It's certainly something that takes a lot of practice. The practice of obedience and of faith. Worrying ruins our lives more than it adds to it. The Lord invites us to seek Him and His ways. The dictionary describes the word seek as the following. It's an attempt to find something, the attempt or desire to achieve something or ask for something from or ask for some um, or ask for something from someone. And one thing that God doesn't want us to do is to take him at face value. He wants us to seek him because he wants to bless us. And so I hope this morning that this word encourages you to trust him in spite of our circumstances because he's faithful. He says he will add what we lack in Jesus' name. Why don't you pray with me this morning? Lord, thank you that we are created to worship you. You are so great. You are so powerful. You are so holy. And yet, we get to know you. We get to give to you and expand your kingdom. And so we thank you this morning, Lord, that we are able to give in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Treswell beautiful senior leader on our team at Southside Church. We love him and his family, um, and uh, it's so great to hear that. Thank you for that word. Right now, um, we are in our second ever live online church service, and since lockdown, our team has come together, and we uh, had put together some pre-recorded messages each week, and we just felt that as we chose not to maintain but multiply, the next step was to create a live experience. We know that God ministers to us in moments, and we trust that as we are live with you now in real time, there would be moments in which God would do miraculous work in your personal life. And so it's so good to be with you today and in week four of our series, Living Beyond Lockdown. Something also that, that's super exciting for us is that in three weeks time, Southside Church is two years old and we're celebrating our two years together. You know, I look at some of our worship team here and we've all got stories. We all came together from different spaces and places. Some of us had been faithfully involved. Some of us had kind of been figuring out where to plant ourselves. Some of us were not part of this yet. Some of us had been on the prayer lists of people like Fabian's family. And what God has done in three years to see the hundreds of people come in and partner with and experience the power of God, to see the hundreds of people that have come to salvation, how we went from one small service and multiplied to two that have been growing all the way into the COVID season, to see over 100 kids in Southside Kids on Sundays, over 200 people joining life groups, to over 200 people serving in different ways as we make a difference. Almost 400 people through growth track in our two year journey together. To think that God has done so much in such a little time. We know the best is yet to come. And so we are in the first of three weeks counting down to our, our second birthday. And so would you join us? We're gonna have a party online on that day. I don't know how we're gonna do it. We're meeting with a creative team on Monday to plan that. We might have a DJ up here. You might have to dance at home and eat a lot of food. Not like we aren't in lockdown, we're all eating more carbs than we should, help me Jesus. Um, but super excited for you to join us for that and so glad you're with us at our online service today. And right now, um, we're gonna focus on and prepare our hearts for the word. And I've got the privilege of introducing a friend, a young man that has come under uh, my leadership around his preaching. He's a motivational speaker. He's an author of two books. He's a man that has gone to schools throughout South Africa and other areas in the world 
speaking and giving hope to young people around the decisions and destiny that lies ahead of them. And so I want to introduce as we go into week four, um, my good friend, Jared Smith. But before we do that, I want us to pray for the word as he comes up and prepares to deliver the revelation that God's put on his heart as part of this series. So with, with me, would you close your eyes wherever you are? Would you put your hand on your heart as a sign that in this moment, you're letting go of every other thing that's racing through your head, that you're going to be present. You're gonna open your heart to the double-edged sword of God's word yes. that he could cut through, transform. So Father, right now we come and we put our hands in our hearts. We breathe and we pause and we choose that we will be present in this moment as you speak your word into our lives. We pray, Father, that as we hear your word, you would transform us, that you would do a deep work inside of us, that you would lead us into the future promises that lie ahead, even though we might be facing a present period of fear and confusion. Father, we give our hearts to you as you speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, Southside Church. It's so exciting to be back live. It's just a different atmosphere this morning. I feel like I want to dance, but I actually can't. I don't want to scare you away. <laughs> Thanks for all joining us this morning. I really hope that you're going to be blessed by this word as we go through the season of pressure as God takes us towards his promise. But I want to say something this morning. No matter what is happening in our lives right now, if we are breathing this morning, there is still a future to take hold of, a plan to unfold, a purpose to discover, a promise to step into. You see, God is not bound by any barriers. There's no limitation to His presence. He is with us right now. He is the name above all names. His name is Jesus. As you know, we are on week four of our series, Living Beyond Lockdown. And we've been exploring how whenever there's a promise from God to take it, requires preparation to possess it. The promise is guaranteed, but the only uncertain variable is our willingness to take possession. Because it will require enduring a season of preparation, which comes with pressures. Over the last few weeks, we have been journeying together around navigating the pressures of preparation and guarding our hearts in the season of lockdown. Because the way that we survive today will determine how we thrive tomorrow. The way we survive today will determine how we thrive tomorrow. So today I want to speak into the pressures that cause us to want to grumble complain and moan, and I want to speak into the power of gratitude. You see, 11 years ago, I was dying on the streets, addicted to drugs, homeless, injecting tick into my arms. I'd been arrested over seven times. I'd been to rehab eight times. People gave me no hope to change, but God. You see, God came into my situation and changed my life. He did the impossible. Jesus set me free. And because of what he did for me, because he set me free, I will forever be grateful for that one thing that he did for me. So this morning, if you've woken up to a nice breakfast, a nice cup of rooibos tea, coffee, Nespresso, whatever your fancy is, if you are breathing, if you have a roof over your head, if you have a family member sitting next to you, a warmth of, of pajamas, you are blessed. Those things are gifts from God. Billy Graham says, even when life may be difficult, we should thank God for all he has done for us, which we did not deserve or do not deserve. You see, Romans 8.28 says, we know that God works all things out. Can I get an amen? amen. We're so used to doing the amen as a default response, but here's the question. But then how come we complained about the lines being too long at the shops yesterday, if God's working all things out? That's a question. How come we complained about the Wi-Fi speed this morning? 
How come we're complaining about the pace at which our spouse works if God is working all things out? You see, I want to ask you a question this morning before I get into the sermon. What's the first thing you see? 99.9% of us will see the black dot. That's what we do. We're always looking at what's wrong with our lives, what we want, what we need, what we think we deserve. We're always focusing on what we think is going wrong instead of looking at all the blessings and the provision and the power and the potential and the talents God has given us. This morning, let's shift our focus because if we focus on this, this will begin to grow and we will lose sight of God's goodness in our lives. Instead of complaining, Shouldn't we be asking God what he's trying to teach us and be thankful that the God who created the universe is taking the time out to shape us, to teach us, to mold us, and protect us individually? The God who created the universe is taking the time out to shape us individually. Let's be thankful. But so often when we face seasons of pressure where certain things are challenging our control issues, or we feel overwhelmed by uncertainty, or maybe something's been removed from your life and it's, it's hurting, and you're feeling unfairly treated. Maybe you're struggling with anger and frustration at how things are currently working out in your life. It's in these seasons we must guard our hearts, because in these seasons we can so quickly slide into an attitude of grumbling, complaining, and fault-finding, pointing out exactly what's wrong with our lives. And the more we point out, the more that mindset is developed in our minds. We may even be complaining about the process that is taking us towards our blessing. You're complaining about the process that is taking to what you prayed for. We're complaining about the process that is taking us to our new mindset, our new jobs. We complain about the process that will take us to our answered prayers and the very thing that God has promised us, that blessing. Are you complaining about the process that God is using to take you towards what you're asking Him for? As Pastor Grant said last week, what we are going through is often preparing us for what we've asked God for. You see, this morning I want us to realize something. Our brains, they are beautiful things. They love efficiency. But when we repeat certain behaviors such as complaining, our neurons branch out towards each other to ease the flow of information. This makes the behavior easier to repeat in the future. So easy that we might not even realize that we're doing it. They say that neurons that fire together, wire together. Neurons that fire together, wire together. So let's break it down like this. So when we complain, a bridge is formed in our minds. Now when I think of bridge, I think of stronghold a chemical and physical stronghold in your mind. That's why the Bible says, do not give the enemy foothold in your life. Do not give the enemy foothold in your life. I started researching the word foothold and found that the business terminology means this, a favorable position that creates a foundation for further advancement. Did we catch this? When we give the enemy a foothold in our lives through complaining, we are giving him, him a favorable position in our hearts that forms a negative foundation that allows him to further advance deeper into our lives. Are you giving the enemy the top position in your heart through complaining? You see, footholds can rob us from taking hold of what God is trying to give us. On average, they say every human complains every two minutes. And we don't even realize we're doing it. It's become so part of our daily lives that it's impacting our health, our blood pressures, our anxiety levels, our depression, irritation, and tiredness. But you are, you are labeling it as something else. It's because of the complaining that we feel this way. I sense that's why sometimes we find ourselves being disillusioned about God's goodness in seasons of pressure. Because the complaining has clouded our ability to see God's provision in the tension. The complaining has clouded our ability to see God's provision in the tension. Okay, so we're ready. 
Are we, are we, are we starting? Like, uh, okay, our text today is from Numbers 11, 1 to 6, if you want to follow with me in your Bibles. Now, the people complained about their hardships, and the Lord heard everything they said. And when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Then fire from the Lord burnt among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So that place was called Tabira because the fire from the Lord had burnt among them. The rubble, the non-Israelites with them, began to crave other foods. And again, the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember, we remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. They had heavenly manna, but they wanted Egyptian meat. You can work that one out. You see, we don't complain about what we don't have. We complain about what we have, but it's not the way we want it. Because I often thought that complaining is about, I'm complaining about something I don't have, but it's not. I'm complaining about what I have, but it's not the way I want it. You see, complaining never changes our circumstances, but it does change us. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 says, Don't suppress, do not quench the Holy Spirit. When we complain, we're actually quenching and suppressing the power of God that is trying to operate in our lives. You see, our attitude becomes the barrier to our blessing. Our attitude becomes the barrier to our blessing. And when we allow that lack mentality to creep into our lives, it leaves us feeling robbed, unmotivated, hopeless, and our strength is disabled. But sometimes I realize that in life, when God's provision doesn't line up with our plans, we begin to complain. When God's provision doesn't line up with our plans, we complain. And Proverbs 16, 9 says, we make our own plans. We can make our own plans, but the Lord determine, de 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 sorry, determines the steps. You see, there's a season for everything. Sometimes our plans and his steps are different, but we can trust his steps because those steps are headed towards the promise, towards something better, something worthy. But in the seasons of pressure, it's important that we focus on what we do have, the good things in our lives, the way God has been providing for us that will strengthen us. In verse 4, it says, one of the reasons the Israelites started to complain again was because of the rubble the non-Jewish people that were with them. You see, so often we are affected and impacted by the people around us. Their, their, their outlook on life affects us because we're not guarding our hearts and our minds. You see, we unconsciously mimic the moods of those around us, their behaviors. What you monitor, you mirror. Just like my daughter. She says, Daddy chopping the tree? She also wants to chop the tree. She says, Daddy, sometimes use a word he shouldn't. She says the same word. Okay, I'm letting out the secrets here. <laughs> whoever we invite into our space, whoever we allow to surround us, has an impact on us. So if you're surrounded by people that are always complaining, 95% of the time you're going to start complaining. So in this season of pressure, it's so important we surround ourselves with the right voices the right people. This one thing can determine if we take hold of God's promises in faith. This very thing can determine if we cross over into the promised land. Take all the people of war with you. Quality, not quantity. But I have a question for us this morning. Have you ever reacted to the middle of a conversation, but the person hadn't finished speaking yet? I do that sometimes. Sorry, wife. And what you assume was the outcome wasn't. Hey, you thought it was going somewhere, but it went somewhere else. Okay, and you were in trouble, y'all. Yeah. I sense we do this with God in seasons of pressure. We react to the middle of the chapter. We, we, we assume that the wilderness experience is the final destination. We forget where we are going. But I want to remind you this morning, God is not finished writing. Let us not complain about an incomplete journey. 
God is taking us somewhere, so let's trust Him. Let's not react in fear, but respond in faith, knowing our God is faithful. In verse 5, the Israelites remembered the fish, the meat, the cucumbers, and the melons they ate while being in Egypt. What I realize and what I sense is our ability to be grateful is sometimes blocked by the cravings of our conditioning from one season. We get so used to a certain thing that it creates an expectation. And when life shifts and moves towards a new season and things start to look different, we begin to compare what we had to what we have. And because it looks different, we complain. Just because it doesn't look like your old normal doesn't mean God is not providing. Just because things look different in the season of pressure doesn't mean that God is not providing for you. He is providing. He is faithful to His Word. Sometimes God will give us less of something in order to give us more of Him. Sometimes there's certain things that need to be removed so He can give us more of Him. So, so in this season, the external blessings may be less, but God wants to increase the internal downloads of his, ever, his revelation to increase your faith. You see, God gives us everything we need to live a godly life, but we receive this by knowing Jesus. In the season of pressure, God wants to spiritually mature us, but are we allowing him to mature us? In Philippians 2.14, the Bible says, do everything without complaining. Do everything. Forgive me, Lord. God says, do everything without complaining. Maybe we don't complain because people are doing things wrong. Maybe we don't complain because our lives are bad. Maybe we complain because we don't like change. Maybe we complain because God is taking us out of our comfort zones. You see, if we complain in the seasons of pressure that is meant to prepare us, what is meant to assist us in working out our salvation and our calling will actually hinder and hurt us. The very thing that is meant to develop us will derail us. Complaining drains us of the capacity we need for our calling. There's no petrol left. That's why you're tired. That's why you're tired. That's why you aren't sober-minded. That's why you're unable to guard your heart. Your strength is being sucked out of you from the complaining. You see, a trip that was meant to take 11 days, the Israelites were meant to travel 11 days, took them 40 years. Because complaining prevents us from crossing over into the promised land. It, It creates a misdirection. It creates confusion. It takes us off course. It confuses us. And in in verse 5, the Israelites said, we have lost our appetite. You see, when we complain, we work ourselves up. And our bodies release a large amount of cortisol. And cortisol is a stress hormone. And one of the side effects of cortisol is loss of appetite and weak. But check this out. You see, complaining doesn't only cause us to lose our appetite for food. Complaining causes us to lose our appetite for our relationships for God, for our job, church, life, we lose our appetite. The colors in our painting disappear, and it robs us of our joy. And sometimes we even complain about situations we have created. God blesses us, we misuse that blessing, and then we complain we don't have. God is saying, when I bless you, use what I give you with discernment and wisdom. You see, in Ephesians 4.31, it says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger. Everything we resist in our lives will always insist. Remember that. When we carry around bitterness from our yesterday's disappointments, where we felt unfairly treated, or maybe we're carrying around past betrayal, or maybe we felt like we deserved that promotion last year, or maybe we feel like God let us down in our financials and other opportunities, we're just feeling unfairly treated. This will cause us to have a bitter taste in our hearts, which is the root reason we complain. The disappointments, the bitterness is why are we complaining? We have to deal with it. We have to address it. You see, if we don't deal with the root issues in our lives, 
they will cause us to malfunction in seasons of pressure. You see, pressure will always push things to the surface. And if we're not dealing with our bitterness, those things that get pushed to the surface will impact the way we live. It will impact the choices we make, and we will become irrational in our thinking. We will do things that will cost us too much. We must understand that certain things happen in our lives for a reason. And what we have labeled as an infection, right, is actually God's protection giving our lives a redirection. We often label things as God's unfair. It becomes an infection. It's not. It's God's protection giving your life a whole redirection. He's protecting you. What seems to us as a bitter trial are often blessings in disguise. And in this season of pressure, we can so easily marry anger when things aren't going at our speed or pace. I know I get like that sometimes. And when things aren't going how we would like them to, we begin to see life as unfair and we get frustrated with certain outcomes. It even causes us to question God's goodness and question our own existence. We must remember that God is using this season of pressure for our benefit and he knows what he is doing. Pull the word of God into your situation so that that confusion can become clear. You see, we have a choice to be frustrated at God for what's happening in our lives or what we don't have, or we can be thankful for what we do have. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances may be, be thankful and give thanks, for this is the will of God. God is not saying give thanks for. He's saying give thanks in everything and every situation, no matter what the circumstance may be. This is not always easy. And I think we fail on a daily basis. But His grace is sufficient for us. But this is God's will to give thanks in every situation. But God is saying we must not allow the seasons of difficulties to prevent us from giving thanks. We can be thankful this morning for God's presence, His peace, His faithfulness, His comfort, and so much more. And at the top it says, for this is His will. You see, His will and His way is always the healthiest option for our lives. Spiritually, emotionally, relationally, mentally. You see, everything that is, is allowed into our lives or not allowed into our lives is either from His hand directly or filtered through His hand of unfailing love and infinite wisdom. God knows what He's doing. And so we can give thanks in everything because He is still on the throne and He is in control. And it's a beautiful piece of scripture we see, Paul was in prison in Rome. He wrote, while he was in prison, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This dude was in prison, and he was saying, sing and make music in your heart. Give thanks to the Lord. You see, Paul had learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, living in plenty or want. Paul's ability to be thankful in the pressure wasn't based on what he had, but who he knew. He knew God's heart. He knew God would work all things out. He knew God was with him. He knew there was a plan. He looked beyond lockdown. He looked beyond lockdown to his father, his loving father who is faithful, regardless of how things may seem. Look beyond lockdown towards your heavenly father, who loves you, and he'll never leave you. Pastor Grant said last week, peace comes not by resolving the problem of the present, but by trusting in the promise of his presence. That's what Paul did. He was trusting in the promise of God's presence despite what he was going through. Life may seem unfair. Life may be unfair, but God is faithful. God is faithful. Whatever you are going through right now, this morning, depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, marriage or problems, whatever you're going through, whatever demons you're fighting, God's grace is sufficient to carry you. We can give thanks because the very breath of God is in us, and He will enable us to press towards the things He has in store for us. You see, gratitude takes nothing for granted. 
It gives thanks in all circumstances. It acknowledges each favor, each gift, each challenge, both big and small. But above all else, gratitude recognizes the giver. Every good thing we have in our lives is a gift from God, even the wilderness seasons. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father. Your faith is a gift. Your faith is a gift from God. He gave it to us. Every day we wake up is a gift. Our talents, our minds, every meal, our voice, our clothes, it's a gift. Our obstacles are a gift. Every good and healthy thing that you have in your life is a gift from God. Not every good thing, because sometimes we like things that aren't good. God is the source of every good thing in our lives. His goodness doesn't change, even when we are going through the precious seasons of preparation. His character doesn't change. But when we begin to take the small things for granted, we no longer see the gift and we lose sight of the giver. When we take the small things for granted, we no longer see the gift and we lose sight of the giver. Being aware of these gifts, small or big, will stir gratitude in our hearts. Gratitude turns what we have into enough. And to be grateful means to find the blessing in everything. But are we doing that? You see, I realize that gratitude helps us get through tragedy, reflecting on what we can be grateful for. It helps us find beauty in the pain. It releases us from being caught up in an injustice world, a fallen world, a sinful world, an unfair world. So often we get caught up into that. Gratitude sets us free. You see, he gives us everything out of the goodness of his heart, but also for our good. Every situation, no matter how difficult, is a gift designed to bring us good in both this life and the next. But in this season of preparation, I want to declare this over your life. The pressure is the blessing, and what the pressure will produce in your life is the gift from God. The pressure is the blessing because what that pressure is going to produce in you is going to be the gift from God. You see, God took the Israelites out of Egypt, but God takes us through a wilderness season to take Egypt out of us. God took the Israelites out of Egypt, but God takes us through the wilderness season, the pressure seasons, to take Egypt out of us. We pray for God, we pray to God for help, and God starts to work. But most of the times, he needs to remove certain things from our lives, kill certain addictions, certain ways of thinking, so he can, so he can resurrect our dreams, our faith, our self-worth, our joy, and our purpose. There's a reason. But he has to kill certain things. Sometimes God has to bury things first before he can resurrect them, just like Jesus. That's why we can praise him in the pressure for he's good and faithful. And every season we go through where it feels like we're breaking, God is blessing us. God is building us. God is pushing us into the right direction. And Pastor Grant said last week, if we don't have this mindset, the blessing will become a burden. What God is trying to do in our lives will actually burden us and and we'll want to give up. In Psalm 30, 1 to 2, the words say, I will exalt you, Lord. For you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. We can be thankful that he lifts us out of the depths of our despair more than once. He meets us in the darkest hour of our souls where no one else can reach us. Come on, hallelujah. He has carried us through many pressures of our past and he won't stop now. Even when we thought we were alone, He was with us. He pulled us out of the mess of sin, and He loved us when we deserved death. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 105, verse 5, Remember the wonders He has done, His miracles, and the judgments He pronounced. In this season of pressure, we must remember, recall, remind ourselves of all God has done for us. Remembrance will strengthen us to press forward. Knowing the same God who got us through before will do it again. Remember those red seas he parted for you. Remember those areas of your life he resurrected. 
Remember those stones of doubt that he rolled away that gave you your faith in Jesus' name. Remember, we are still standing and our hearts are still beating because of him. If you are not dead, God is not done. The pressure is not going to kill you. God is developing you. You see, remembrance stirs gratitude. And gratitude changes the way we feel about the pressure. It changes the way we see the pressure. And it changes the way we respond to the pressure. The power of gratitude. You see, gratitude allows us to see wins in seasons where other people see loss. Melody Betty says, gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates vision for tomorrow. And just a side note, I sense in this season of pressure, there's a lot of people feeling underappreciated in their relationships. And it's affecting you. And God is saying, I hear your cries and I see you. I know you feel alone, but I'm with you. And what's important to realize is that when we feel underappreciated, we can often try and find that affirmation in unhealthy places. But God is saying, be still. Trust me. I want to encourage you this morning. Find one good thing about your relationship and hold on to that as you trust God for breakthrough. But let us all make a bigger effort to acknowledge and thank the people that God has placed in our lives for what they do for us. Even if your wife or your husband gives you one cup of coffee a day, be thankful. Gratitude, <laughs> gratitude can revive your relationships. Gratitude can revive your relationship. I want you to understand this. Appreciation sparks motivation from the one receiving it. When you appreciate people, it sparks motivation in them. Okay? So in the season of preparation, when we feel like complaining, Let's shift our focus onto something, even if it's one thing, we can be grateful for. For Philippians 8 verse 8 said, If there's anything worthy of praise, think continuously on these things. Send your mind on them. Implant them in your heart. The word is saying, if there's anything, even one thing that is worthy of praise, continually focus on this. Moment by moment, day by day, implanting them into your heart. Gratitude must become an attitude we develop, but it requires self-control. We must practice self-control at our point of desire. And everything we practice in our lives will become permanent, if it's good or bad. Gratitude guards our hearts from grumbling. It protects our hearts from complaining. So let's take the time to reflect on what we can be grateful for. Because it reduces our stress, improves our moods, clears our minds, less anxiety, and we're actually more resilient, and we can make healthier choices. So in this season, let's become more aware of God's goodness. His goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. In this season of pressure, His goodness is following us. It's flowing in us and through us. Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Even when, even when I walk through the darkest valleys, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. I want to do something different this morning. So you realize that the Israelites in the beginning said, if only we had, right? If only we had. They said in the the beginning of this, if if only we had a better job. If only we had more of a better house. You know, where would we be? But I want to just remind you this morning, right, as we close. We get back to my page, sorry. So let's replace if only we had with even when, thank goodness. Even when I'm under pressure, thank goodness, there's a promise. Even when I may have less than I want, thank goodness, God is still providing. Even when I'm in pain, thank goodness, God is my comfort. Even when things get taken away, thank goodness, God is still faithful to his plan for my life. Even when I'm in season where I feel like I'm failing, thank goodness, God is refining and helping me. Even when I feel overwhelmed, thank goodness, I can cast my cares upon him for he cares for me. Let our arguments become amen. The Bible says in Psalm 136 verse 1, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. When God looks at us with all our flaws and our mistakes and our hang-ups, He says, I want to bless you. I want to be generous towards you. I want to pour out into your life. I want to satisfy your soul because I love you. You are my child. I want the best for you. So come on this morning. Let's be grateful. Let's thank God for our families who never gave up on us. 
Let us thank God for the battles he fought for us and we overcame. Let us praise him for the courage that he gave us to forgive when it really hurts. Let us praise him for providing a food and home. Let us praise him for the addictions he has broken in our lives. Let us pra praise him that he's preparing us in the pressure to take hold of his promise. Let us praise him even when the devil is at us. God's hand is on us. And let us thank God for his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, who gave us the greatest gift of eternal life. And as we close this morning, I want to remind us, gratitude helps us see God's heart. It guards our hearts against the enemy. It fills our hearts with peace as we count our blessings. And it deepens our faith and fills us with joy. Derek Bonhoeffer says, it's only with gratitude that life becomes rich. So this morning, I just want to pray for you. We just thank you, Father God, for, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for every blessing that you've given us. We thank you that you are faithful. We thank you in the midst of our pressure that you are working all things out, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace that sets us free day in and day out. And when you look at us, you see your child you love and that you just want the best for us. You just want to see us walk in the calling that you have ordained for our lives, that you have purposed. You knew us before we were born. You breathed your very breath into us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This morning, if you don't know Jesus, I'd like to pray for you. You can just close your eyes and follow after me. Lord Jesus, I just thank you that you died on the cross for me. That because of you, I may be set free. I come this morning and I confess my sins. I confess my mistakes. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come in my life and be my Lord and Savior. I pray that you will guide me through the power of your Holy Spirit. And that you will help me walk in the calling and the plans that you have purpose for me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Wow, that was powerful. That was amazing. I want to thank uh, Jared for sharing that amazing message. It definitely spoke to me in so, so many ways. And perhaps it spoke to you this morning too. Um, if you're s sitting there watching and uh, you've uh, said that prayer that uh, Jared just led us through, that salvation prayer, then uh, we would love to journey with you in this next season because that decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior would be the best decision you would ever make in your entire life. And so I want to encourage us, if you've been watching and if you said that prayer, please check out on our website. You will find a connection card there to fill out your details. Um, and then obviously someone from our church here at Southside would love to journey with you and they will make contact with you um, through the course of this week. And then also, if there's anything at all that you would love prayer for, um, we also uh, would love to pray with you, whether it's a job, whether it's a family member struggling, whether there's illness, we would love to pray. Um, the number you can WhatsApp or text us on um, if you have any prayer requests, that number is 66 505-4250 Any prayer requests at all, feel free to send that through and then we love praying here at Southside Church on a Wednesday night Pastors Grant and Janine are live on Facebook and Zoom, um, so you would need to log on to that and um, yeah, you can join us during those, web, uh, those webinars every Wednesday night. Anyone, you're welcome to join us. Um, the ways to, to connect with us is on our screen over there. And um, yeah, earlier on, uh, we shared the offering. And if you haven't had the opportunity yet um, to um, submit your tithes and offering, um, also on our website, you can find the means to do that. And so now we are going to close um, with our priestly prayer. So if you would like to close your eyes with me as I pray. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you all next week.